Good morning, good morning. It is Thursday, November 22nd, 2018. Happy Thanksgiving to those of you who are awake and having your first coffee. You may wonder why there's an ugly quilt in the middle of our screen. Well, that's for a later story. So let's go out into the big wide world and find out what's going on today. And we start with Today in History for November 22nd. I appreciate your being here this morning. Mrs. Kennedy is organizing herself. It takes longer. <laughs> but of course she looks better than we do when she does it. But we appreciate your welcome. This city has been a great western city. I was five and a half years old, give or take a few days, on this day in 1963. My sister was born on November 15th, 1963. And so this day was a little different for me as a kindergartner than it was for most people. I uh, probably, uh, well not probably, I actually went to school uh, for a half day because our kindergarten was half day. You either went morning or afternoon and then in January the uh, time frame that you went to kindergarten switched. So I'm not sure if I was in the morning session or the afternoon session in the fall of 1963. But I know that I was home half day and that this was the day that my sister came home from the hospital because back then you stayed in the hospital for a week, which might seem like a blessing to some young mothers uh, in today's times, but Back then, moms wanted to get home. Uh, they didn't want to be in the hospital and they didn't have a choice. The hospital would not release you uh, for seven days. So this was the day that my brand new baby sister came home. And so it's a bittersweet day in our family history. Um, what I remember of that day is the TV being on all day. And that is the first, uh, that was, that was the first in a ha lifelong habit that I've only recently broken whenever there is um, national news that affects the whole country. Uh, for years, I, and I've just remembered this, for years I was, um, I had the TV on whenever anything happened. And for a few of those years, I was sick every time something happened in my adult life, not when I was a child. Um, and I can remember watching certain events from bed uh, because I was sick. So uh, since today is Thanksgiving, let's uh, look at some other stories regarding this day. And I like to leave us with this picture of Jackie Kennedy uh, when she was happy. 
because I, not to say she wasn't happy subsequently uh, in her, you know, life surviving John F. Kennedy, but this, um, this moment is iconic to my childhood, and so let's leave us with um, cheering crowds and Mrs. Kennedy looking lovely in her tailored understated suit. So let's go to modern day and from Zero Hedge, Tyler Durden brought us this uh, clip from DC Caller and let's just jump right into it. As soon as I find the play button. Here we go. Just asking people if they think Thanksgiving is racist. It's a genocidal holiday, so yes. Hey guys, I'm Jessica Kramer here with the Daily Caller News Foundation. We're here at American University and we're asking students if they think Thanksgiving is racist. Oh wow. That's quite a question. Yes. I guess if you think about it, yeah, it kind of is because we're celebrating like taking over people's land. Kind of. Yeah. I think there, there's elements of that in the holiday. Not at all. I would say yes. No. I don't personally think that Thanksgiving is racist at all. Anything specific that you think is specifically racist about the history of Thanksgiving? Um, there's just like this false perception. Technically it's about bringing together uh, the pilgrims and the Indians, but what we did to Native American communities across the country is horrible, so... <laughs> um, I think, um... I don't know, I guess like I want to celebrate it because like, I get to see my family after three months. Um, but I guess that's, that's a tough question. Like all the Native Americans to die and get sent off to reservations, I think it's really hard to separate that from the holiday. Okay, so what should we replace Thanksgiving with? Oh man, that's a really good question. I personally haven't done the research myself to understand what most likely happened, but I think it's kind of just like the lies the textbooks growing up tell us. So why do you say no? Because it's about friends and family and regardless of like the history that's behind it, uh, no one goes into Thanksgiving dinner with their family thinking, oh, I'm going to try and establish white supremacy. No, it's all about eating turkey and having a good time. Wait, what did that guy say? So why do you say no? Because it's about friends and family and regardless of like the history that's behind it, uh, no one goes into Thanksgiving dinner with their family thinking, oh, I'm going to try and establish white supremacy. No, it's all about eating turkey and having a good time. I never really, like, thought about it that way because I just think about it as a day of getting together with my family. That's it. I think it's a nice time to gather with family and friends and just get together and enjoy each other's company. The idea behind it is it's supposed to be for people to be together, not about being racist. I mean, that's just fetching for ideas for something that's not really there. And we're going to stop right there because this gum smacking guy is getting on my last nerve way too early in the morning. And also because under Title 17, Section 107, all of the material we are pre uh, presenting to you today in this broadcast falls, in our opinion, under fair use for education discussion, news, and information. I think that the two comments, uh, one, both guys uh, surrounding the fact that it's for friends and family and racism essentially shouldn't be brought into it, uh, shows that we don't really teach the history of our country in a way that is honest and forthright. But fear not, we have a liberal magazine that has written a guide to ruin white people's Thanksgiving. And this is by Carmen, Carmine Sabia, and it was produced yesterday. And the article reads as follows. For some reason, Liberals appear to be determined to ruin every holiday for their families. Imagine having to sit at a table with these people 
and have a good time as they find new ways to deride you for not being as woke as they are. And now they are writing a guide on how to ruin your holiday. On Wednesday, Teen Vogue published a story advising teens on how to ruin their family's Thanksgiving by preaching to them about the evil wit colonizers who destroyed the Native Americans. In the United States, so much of what Americans are thankful for, our families, homes, the food we enjoy, are the products of ongoing colonization, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. You can read it for yourself. It links, as always, in the show notes. But I'd like to point this out. If you'd like to do your part to help rewrite the story at your gathering this year, here are some ways you can start working towards a more just future. And Teen Vogue a liberal magazine gives us five points to educate your family those people who are older than you do your research ahead of the big holiday meal read up on the truths that define native histories two three four, five, seven, and then uh, the Federalist Papers goes on to point out, apparently the editors at Teen Vogue were not able to count as they went from five to seven. So is that six bullet points or five or seven? Now, as a product of the American public education system, I have to sympathize with these people because from the time that I was educated until today, it's only gotten worse and worse. And I'll tell you that I'm not a math aficionado. In fact, I can't stand math. I understand that it is... Um, based on firm concepts that never change, except the way those concepts are expressed mystified me from day one. Let's just talk about five to seven right here on the screen. Now, when I started learning about the mysteries of math, they would give me these little symbols that look like little arrows to me uh, without the tails. And I was supposed to master the concept from printed material of greater than or less than. But it was always expressed in these little symbols that looked like arrows. And I couldn't understand why arrows had anything to do with five and seven. If they had said to me, is five bigger or smaller than seven? I would have gotten the concept much more quickly. So I can understand why, uh, you know, Teen Vogue targeted at the, the 12 to 17 year old market would print a guide of this nature. But let's move on. Let's not dwell on my math problems of several decades ago. Also on this day, Abraham Lincoln, the 35th president or I mean the 16th president. Wow, I've got my numbers wrong. Oh my goodness. Kennedy, in the notes, was the 35th. And Lincoln was the 16th. See, public education. Anyway, 
<clears throat> all fixed. Abraham Lincoln's Thanksgiving Day Proclamation. This is from Fox News. And there we have our 16th president. And this is a uh, collage from AP Photo Pool with no credit given. Editor's note, the following is a proclamation from Abraham Lincoln on Thanksgiving Day, October 20th, not in November, 1864. And it reads as follows. It has pleased Almighty God to prolong our national life another year, defending us with his guardian care against unfriendly designs from abroad and vouchsafing us in his mercy, many and signal victories over the enemy who is of our own household. It has also pleased our Heavenly Father to provide or to favor us, to favor as well our citizens in their homes as our soldiers in their camps and our sailors on the rivers and seas with unusual health. This has largely augmented our free population by emancipation and by immigration. While he has opened to us new sources of wealth and has crowned the labor of our workmen in every department of industry with abundant rewards. Moreover, he has been pleased to animate and inspire our minds and hearts with fortitude, courage, and resolution sufficient for the great trial of civil war, war into which we have been brought by our adherence as a nation to the cause of freedom and humanity and to afford to us reasonable hopes of an ultimate and happy deliverance from all of our dangers and afflic afflictions. Now therefore I, Abraham Lincoln, President of the United States to hereby appoint and set apart the last Thursday in November next as a day which I desire to be observed by all my fellow citizens, wherever they may be, as a day of thanksgiving and praise to Almighty God, the beneficent creator and ruler of the universe. And I do further recommend to my fellow citizens aforesaid that on occasion they do reverently humble themselves in the dust and from thence offer up penitent and fervent prayers and supplications to the great disposer of events for a return to the inestimable blessings of peace, union, and harmony throughout the land which it has pleased him to assign as a dwelling place for ourselves and for our posterity throughout all generations. This testimony whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the United States to be affixed, done at the city of Washington this 20th day of October AD 1864 and the independence of the United States, the 89th. I wonder what Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of the United States, would make of the fate of the 35th president of the United States and the 45th president of the United States. And now I'd like to take a little trip down memory lane for friends and family far and wide who remember this. This is from Retro Kimmer's blog. And this uh, is my memory of Thanksgiving Day in, whoops, in the 60s. And we're going to blow this up a little bit so that you can actually see what a little bit better. And this was published on the 19th of 2018, 11-19-2018, the Detroit J.L. Hudson's Thanksgiving Day Parade in the 60s. And this is the um, 
parade company's route uh, down Woodward Avenue. Um, so let's see what this blog poster Retro Kimmer has to tell us about my childhood. Detroit's J.L. Hudson's American Thanksgiving Parade is an annual American parade held on Thanksgiving Day in downtown Detroit, Michigan. The tradition started in the city in 1924 by the J.L. Hudson Company department store. It shares the title for the second oldest Thanksgiving Day Parade in the United States with the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in New York City. New York and it's four years younger than uh, ABC Dunkin Donuts Thanksgiving Day Parade in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And this is what we uh, always saw. This was the J.L. Hudson department store. It was a huge building. If you've ever been to Detroit, uh, you remember this. If you were uh, in Detroit any time during the Thanksgiving uh, celebration, and, and this is when holiday decorations uh, were Christmas decorations. So you can see the big bell hanging from the, or no, this is actually a, a gold Christmas tree, hanging from the light post that mirrors the light display on the front of Hudson's in downtown Detroit on Woodward. And this was our, and they had display windows just like Macy's. And this was our destination a couple of times when I was very, very young. Um, we did not ever go to the parade. But we did go uh, down to Hudson's for the Christmas displays. <clears throat> the idea came from Hudson's display director Charles Wendell after the success of the of Canadian East Eaton's Santa Claus Parade in Toronto, Canada. And here you can see uh, balloons as we have come to expect them above the parade route. In addition to the unusual floats and bands, Wendell obtained large paper mache heads similar to those he saw in a recent trip in Europe. The heads made in the Araggio, Italy and remain a fixture of the parade to the present. The paper mache heads uh, on parade volunteers is one of the iconic symbols of the Detroit Thanksgiving Day Parade, which is now not called the Hudson's, it's called some other thing. Uh, the parade was suspended in 1943 and 44 due to material shortages caused by World War II, but Hudson's resumed the event in 1945 and continued sponsorship of the parade until 1979 when costs became burdensome. And if you don't know who is sitting in this uh, black and white photo in this car, I don't know that I can help you. But everybody who does know um, is certainly a Detroit rocker. All right, moving on. It turned the parade over to the Detroit Renaissance Foundation, who produced it for four years. In 1983, Detroit Renaissance transformed, uh, transferred the control of the parade to the newly created Michigan Thanksgiving Parade Foundation. Quote, America's Thanksgiving Parade, close quote, is a registered trademark of the foundation. And here you see the ginormous banner we used to see. Uh, it's Christmas time at Hudson's. And uh, parade float and parade volunteers, and it was jam packed. Nobody ever worried about coming out for this parade. There was no uh, fear about bringing your children to this parade. 
and usually as much as possible the front of the parade was jam-packed with kids not so in 2018 so much the parade featured a variety of floats marching bands and balloons with the climax being the arrival of santa claus who appeared to end the herald of the arrival of the Christmas season. He who appears at the end to herald the arrival of the Christmas season. And here is Santa Claus. And here are uh, here is the crowd that will come off the sidewalks. This is across the street from Hudson. This view is in front of Hudson's and you can see across the street from Hudson's is Woolworths. Santa and Detroit Mayor Jerry Cavanaugh. <clears throat> Boy, that was a long time ago. Unique to the parade is the big head court, featuring a large collection of paper mache heads and the distinguished clown corps, which features local corporate and community leaders dressed as clowns. The parade is made possible through the efforts of more than 4,500 volunteers, and this, I forgot, this caterpillar thing, I forgot what it's called, because it's been so many years, and I never went, so, but I always watched. Over the years, well-known personalities were commentators for the Detroit parades, including John Amos, Ned Beatty, Kathy Garver, Captain Kangaroo, host Bob Keeshan, Linda Lavin, Esther Roll, and Andrew Stevens. And here is Santa. He's uh, received the key, which is a um, climactic part of this whole uh, parade for fun. And parade was first broadcast in 1931 on radio station WWJ, which still exists, uh, the radio station. In 1959, the parade came to television on local stations WWJ-TV and WXYZ-TV. The WXYZ program was hosted by ventriloquist and puppet puppeteer Sherry Lewis with her sock puppet Lamb Chop back when a sock puppet could capture your attention for 35, 30, or 28 minutes and or 25 minutes and leave you wanting more. The parade was carried nationally on ABC Broadcast Network and you can read more about that. So let's take a look. This would have been the year before my sister was born. Calling contrast with what's happening in New York and Philadelphia. The sun is coming out. It's shining down brightly here on Woodward Avenue in Detroit. And here comes the J.L. Hudson Thanksgiving Day Parade. And this is the goose, the enormous goose with the wings spread like a uh, fighter plane dragging the world's biggest golden egg. And it's made out of pure gold. Pure gold. Bob, uh, would you like to have a dozen of those eggs? I think one would do. <laughs> <laughs> and you see surrounding this goose with the golden egg are various employees of the J.L. Hudson Company, some of them wearing heads that were brought over from Italy. They were made in Via Reggio, Italy. And now here comes, music here from comes the Wayne Memorial band. High School Band. That from was... Wayne, Michigan. The director of the band is George Bell. And those band, the members of the band are wearing blue uniforms with gold hats, and gloves, and spats. This band has been featured for three consecutive years at the Detroit Lions football games at Tiger Stadium. Let's listen to it for a minute.
Hey, Dallas and Bob, uh, you were just mentioning uh, uh, that this band was featured at the Detroit Lions game. I think it might be appropriate right now to remind everybody that we really have football fun this afternoon right after our uh, parade jubilee, right? Certainly do, Captain. Yes, we're yes, going indeed, to have Captain. that wonderful game, uh, the Green Bay Packers and the Detroit Lions, uh, right after we leave and you. the Green Bay Packers. Packers. That's right. So everybody stand by for loads of football fun on CBS television right after the parades today. Well, here comes Dino the Dinosaur. Dino the Dinosaur, probably the world's biggest dinosaur in captivity. From the well-known Flintstone family, Bob. The rest of the family will show up a bit later on. They're uh, partly concealed behind the dinosaur right now. Here comes Dino. A rather good-natured looking dinosaur, I'd say. Can you see the cavemen and cave women walking alongside? Surrounded by cavemen and cave women. They look warm in those furs, too, don't they? They probably need those furs. Uh, after all, while it is sunny here in Detroit, it's been on the chilly side. Just how chilly is it, fellas? About Why 32 does... degrees. So what does that have to do with the ugly quilt you see and you saw in the opening shot? Well, this is another memory. Um, this quilt is not the original ugly quilt. Uh, a couple of years, for a couple of years when I was a young mother, uh, right before and uh, for at least the first Thanksgiving, maybe two Thanksgivings, we had Thanksgiving on the floor on a beautifully made but very ugly quilt. Um, this is not that same quilt as I have said. And it became a tradition. We moved one year uh, before I was married and we did not have dining room furniture. We did not have an oven. I had an old, old, old um, rotisserie countertop oven that would um, suffice temporarily. And so that Thanksgiving, we had, uh, we had dinner on the floor with the ugly quilt as our tablecloth. There were candles. I managed to find some candles that would stand up and not fall over and burn our house down. Uh, we had Thanksgiving dinner out of the rotisserie oven and the crock pot. And it became such a fond memory that we did it again the next year, the Thanksgiving after I was married, we, even though we had dining room furniture. We moved the dining room furniture in a, in a new house out of the dining room and threw couch cushions on the floor and the ugly quilt. We used the best china. I had a real oven and a dishwasher for that matter. And we carried on that tradition for a second year. So thank you for indulging me the extra five minutes to tell the ugly quilt story. Because for a couple of years, it was a very happy memory for me and my kids. And then my husband once we were married. Um, you know, this year... I, my kids are long gone. They're spread out over in several places in the country. And I have a roast sitting in my crock pot that did not take the six to, ten, six to eight hours in the crock pot to cook. It's done already. When I checked it at about 4.30 this morning, it was done. So I turned it off. Now I'm going to throw some potatoes and carrots in, and I should be enjoying one of my favorite meals um, because I can. Nobody's, uh, nobody's here to grumble and grouse because there's no turkey on the table. It would be kind of foolish for me to cook an 18-pound or a 12-pound turkey just for me. 
So, for me and the shepherd, we hope your day is blessed. We hope you remember the words of our 16th president, Abraham Lincoln, in this time that is very similar to the time that he presided over. We hope that you enjoy your family, that you don't pick apart each other's politics, which seems to be the thing we dread about this day to be thankful the most. And so until we see you again, happy Thanksgiving and go easy on the pumpkin pie.